All right, so how about some good news? Good news is you guys are awesome. If you did not know that. And also, we have turned a corner. We are done talking about fuel systems and magnetos and manifold pressures. It's, if, you, if you don't know it now, you'll never know it. We're going to talk about propellers. We'll do fixed, adjustable, then constant speed, and then in the last few days, we're going to lump all this stuff, boom, into it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to question. I looked on Canvas. It looks like there's a test missing. Are we going to lump two together? Uh, there's a test every Friday, except the last week we end on a Wednesday. Uh -huh. Then you have a test on the last day. Oh, on Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So there should be four tests left. I think yeah. it's fixed, fixed, fixed propellers, or propellers and fixed propellers. Then uh, ground adjustable, and then constant speed, and then somewhere there's governors. And then the last one is propeller systems. No, governor's going to be kind of a bigger thing before we get to, we, we do that, then constant speed. Okay. It says reorder your slides. I didn't do that. I want to start this off by reading a quote from Orville Wright. He is the inventor of popcorn. The Orville Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is Orville. You guys know who he is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Whose name is on that popcorn? Orville Wright. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is Orville talking. Okay. <clears throat> it was apparent. I remember the Wright brothers. He was one of them. Got it. Okay. He's Got one it. of the Wright brothers. He's on the back of your, well, if you had one, a, a pilot's certificate, he's on the back of that. Who's on the back of your mechanic certificate when you get one? Yeah, I think he's on the Ohio plates too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, I just asked you a question and his name just flew out of my mind. Um, James Taylor. Not, yeah, not originally. Originally it was Orville. And I think I have Orville and Wilbur on the back of my mechanics, but now it's... Charles Taylor. Anyway, now that we're almost to break and I haven't started, <clears throat> you have a test on Friday. Orville Wright, the father of aviation in America, wrote this or said this. It was apparent that a propeller was simply an aeroplane traveling in a spiral course. As we could calculate the effect of an aeroplane traveling in a straight course, why should we not be able to calculate the effect of one traveling in a spiral course? Yes? So far, so easy. At first glance, this does not appear difficult, but on further consideration, it is hard to even find a point from which to make a start. The thrust depends upon the speed and the angle at which the blade strikes the air. The angle at which the blade strikes the air depends upon the speed at which the propeller is turning, the speed the machine traveling forward, and the speed at which the air is slipping backward. When any of these changes, it changes all the rest, as they are all interdependent upon one another. So I read that to you to say, upon first glance, it's just a wing going through the air. But it is, but when you talk about a wing going through the air, you're talking about speed, and that's it. Okay, and so angle of attack is an important part of this, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you slow an airplane down, you tend to pitch up and increase angle of attack, which keeps the lift, right? Yep. Okay, so talk about... a a wing now going spiral, you have one speed going this way. Now that's fine if we're feet are locked on the brakes and the airplane's not moving and you have the speed going around, okay, that's fine, you can calculate that. It is a wing going in a circle. And you could calculate it out and say, okay, it's going, but you have to figure the speed and you figure the speed out. You could figure the angle of attack. You want about two to four degrees angle of attack. Anything more than that, it stalls. You guys understand stall from Phil, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, not everybody's had aerodynamics, huh? All right, so if I, if I lose you, so aerodynamics, all right, we have angle of attack is the angle at which the air hits the wing. So prop is just a wing. And we're talking about Bernoulli's principle, right? Angle of attack, um, you're going to have some air going over the top of the airfoil, 
which is going to speed up, which is going to cause a low pressure area, which causes lift. You're going to have some air that hits the bottom and deflects down, which is Newton's law, which is, uh, um, what's that? High pressure? Uh, it's not high pressure, it's a reaction. It's a reaction. The reaction has an opposite and equal reaction. Funny thing, you know, when I started flying back in, way back in like the late 90s, uh, somebody gave me a book called Stick and Rudder by Wolfgang Longenstein or something like that. And, it, it, and in there, so I'm reading the book, and it talked about Newton's third law. About react, and so I, I come to work, you know, and, and the guy I worked for, he, he was a Navy pilot. He was trained in the Navy. They're all pilots. I'm like, this is interesting. Nobody ever taught me this. Let me see that book. Well, this is dumb. What? Don't even finish that. It's not true. When I went to A&P school, there was no Newton. It was all Bernoulli, 100%. And, you know, fast forward, what, 30 years? Now it's, well, your book, whenever it's written, now it's like, now both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of weird. It's like, I don't know, they even really know how these things work? But anyway, <laughs> so if the, works the, wing the, the wing is going in a circle, that's fine. You can figure out just how to bend it just right so when it's going, you're going to get that angle of attack. But if I start moving forward this way and this way, you've just changed everything. Absolutely everything. Now, the angle of attack is not just this way, but you have to calculate the forward air. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go faster, it's going to change it. If I slow down, it's going to change it. If I speed up the RPM, it's going to change it. If I slow down the RPM, it's going to change it. So you have to kind of figure if it's a fixed pitch propeller, somebody had to sit there and figure all this out and go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. How fast is the RPM going to be? How fast is the airplane going to be? If you change any one of those variables, you've made the airfoil inefficient which is why fixed pitch propellers are not that efficient. They're really only designed for a very narrow range of operation. So a very narrow range of RPM and a very narrow range of forward velocity. Change either one of those and you change the whole thing. So. Change the RPM Does the altitude change the RPM? No. Okay, for, for example, we've talked a lot about um, static RPM checks, which is only ap applicable to a fixed pitch propeller. So if you look up in an aircraft, say a Cessna 150, it'll say static RPM shall be, and for the Cessna 150, and it'll give you the model and give you a very ra narrow range of static RPM. All right, so if you think about that, it does not say the static RPM will be this to this, at sea level, this to this in Denver, this, it's just, there it is. And it's very narrow, right? And it's designed for uh, a very narrow range of props with varying pitch, a climb, cruise, and, um, uh, yeah, climb or cruise prop. There's a middle one, so that's it. So climb or cruise prop, we'll talk about that more. So that tells you right there that altitude has no difference. So if I'm here, on a very, very hot day, and I go out to check my RPM, my static, and I get, a certain, say I got 2,400 RPM. And I said, whoa, that's just barely there. Well, you know what? It's really hot. When I come in tomorrow, it's supposed to be really cool. What's, what's that going to do for my horsepower? Going to increase horse. I'll come in tomorrow morning. I'm going to have much better horsepower. I bet it's better. So I come in, in the morning. I try it horsepower is it's really cold outside nice crisp air and then I go firewall all the way forward and it goes right to exactly what it was yesterday and why is that because the prop, prop limits the engine. now the props working harder so I got more horsepower but the prop is working harder against that higher density air day before the engine was lacking horsepower because of the hot air but the prop didn't have to work as hard so it always equals out so you go up in altitude, you get less, less RPM. Pop doesn't have to work as hard. But now if you read the POH, I'm not sure if your question is this, and I have a Cessna 150, <laughs> and I want to cruise at 75% power, at 3,000 feet, it's going to give me this RPM. At 5,000, it's going to be a much higher RPM. At 5,000, you're wide open throttle. Why? Because it's talking horsepower, but your prop is now inefficient because you've moved it from the efficient horsepower range to the, it doesn't say that anywhere, but it's just what it is. 
Okay, let's talk about nomenclature. Nomenclature of a fixed pitch prop. Well, the first thing you're going to find that is really hateful is this part that we're looking at right here. That's the back of it. So the front is the back. And the back is the face. Face faces the pilot. Oh. So does it say that here? Yeah, right there. Back of blade. This is the back. Back of the blade. So back of it is the top of the blade and the face is the face faces the pilot. It's the flat part. Alright. Oops, I didn't necessarily mean to do that. Do this. All right, so nomenclature. Nomenclature, fixed pitch. Well, we've got the blade. I'm not going to define each thing. I'm just going to kind of give you the word and I think for the most part you're going to know what is what. The blade is obviously, we can go back to the picture, it's the blade. The sharp thing that spins around. We have the neck. The neck is this little area right here. Or right here. Um, well, the hub is where it attaches to the, yeah. It's a fixed pitch. We have a neck. You don't. It's where the blade joins. Sure. Neck. We've got the hub. Hub is where it joins the crankshaft. We have the hub bore. Hub bore is important. That's the hole. Because that hole is supposed to be the exact same size as the crankshaft pilot that comes out. So the two go over each other. Hub bore, we got the bolt holes. It's probably about, I'm just guessing, it seems like it's about five thousandths loose. Uh, the bolt holes. Seems kind of silly to bring up the prop bolt holes. I mean, anyway, there's just holes, right? But a lot of that's a lot of stress goes on in that area. And there are some props out there with airworthiness directives, even fits, fixed pitch, where you have to inspect those for cracks. It's like a huge, huge deal. Uh, the blade tip, which is obviously the end of. It is the end. So question like to talk about this. Why are the tips, this one's not, why are the tips on this propeller painted a bright white color? Okay, funny story. If you, if you ever heard the, the old saying about Henry Ford, he, he's the guy who invented that. He didn't invent the automobile. Actually, he invented a way to mass produce, but he produced all the Fords. You can have it any color you want as long as it's black. black. That's the same. Mm -hmm. Why? Cheap. Yeah, it has something to do with its drying characteristics. Other colors took too long to dry. Right? I think that's correct. Right? Okay, well, it was kind of the same thing with props. So as we moved into metal props, you have it any color you want as long as it was black. black. And well, part of the problem with black is while it does dry, so they would use black because it dried a lot quicker, black paint does not have the same cohesion um, as other colors do. So it, would, it doesn't stick to the aluminum like other colors do, but they still want a black. Also, you have to have black. You ever heard of this thing called flicker vertigo? So I was taught this by a guy who ran his prop through a, a barbed wire fence. He called me up at work. He said, hey, I need you to bring a whole bunch of files. Stop by load on the way home. I ran through a barbed wire fence. I need you to 
and he and he talked about how it made him sick. And he, he told me the story. Yeah, flicker vertigo. And I'm like, oh God, what? And he's like, you know, back in the old days when they had silent movies, they they hadn't figured out the speed, and they flickered, and people would get sick to their stomach. And you get the same thing from a propeller uh, if it flashes light at you. So they're painted black, flat black, for that very reason. Okay, so flat black, number one, you got to have a flicker vertigo. Number two, black doesn't, you know, dried a little bit better, but I think it had more to do with the flicker vertigo. Black does not have the same cohesion uh, as other colors. So what would happen, because the prop is spinning, there's a tremendous amount of centrifugal force, and the paint would actually start sliding off. And so what you had to do is you would have to come and you would actually find at the end and you could like cut off the extra file, the extra paint. But then around the hub, you'd be missing paint. So you're constantly having to paint the hub and then it would slide off a little bit. You'd cut it, trim it, then you'd paint the hub. So they figured that if you could actually paint the tips white, it would, okay, but it would cap it and then the paint wouldn't slide off. And so that's how we ended up with the bright colors and doing that. I know. That's the biggest shit story I've ever told you guys. <laughs> There's no truth to that. So <laughs> Come on, man. Paint slides off and you paint the hub. How gullible are you guys? <laughs> you wrote that down, right? <laughs> All right, why they, why they painted a bright color? You can see it so you don't walk into it. <laughs> I know. Why is it? Why is this fabric one not painted that way? Because <laughs> there's wood. This wood won't hurt you if you walk into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> just gives you a little. Just is. I don't know. I think. Bonk. Just a little, a little bonk. bonk. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Glad I got that in. Blade tip. Um, leading edge. Leading edge is obviously the part that goes forward. That is the the roundy end, not the very sharp trailing edge. You'll notice here on this particular wood prop. Well, it does say they have fabric. And they do. They put fabric over it. And then metal tipping. And the metal tipping is so that... Debris from damaging the prop. During takeoff, taxiing, and landing. Uh, also, rain is very hard on propellers. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Rain, ice would be too. Even more so. Why is, but, why is rain? Why is rain so hard? Uh, do you, you never... You get, can you when it rains? Could you give him a ride <laughs> on your motorcycle? <laughs> you, you yeah, you've never gone on a roller coaster yeah. in the rain. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I did it. I yeah, the one at Disney. My kids I, talked I me into riding that Six one. Flags, and it was just it freaking hurts. It felt like I was playing airsoft. Yeah, and that's sixty miles an hour. <laughs> we'll have to figure out how. I don't know how many miles per hour. Oh well, I actually know um, the miles per hour of. A propeller out here at the tip is about, I'm going to say, close to 75% of the speed of sound. So. I got a question about the tips, and you can shut me up if we're going to get into it because I thought we will. But what's the deal with those? The what's the vent? deal with? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, vent, uh, the vent prop tips that are vent after you have a picture of them. You see them on like Piper Navajos and stuff a lot. I've always wondered about that. Okay. The, the, yeah, that. This happens from one of two things. Okay. No. That's one. <laughs> if it's curled back severely and there's scraping, that's a prop strike. Right. If you hit your prop under power, it bends it forward. Um, not under power, bends it back. These are called Q-tips. Right. These are factory. This is like yeah. Q-tips. Q for quiet. Oh. So think of winglets on a on a on the big oh. airliners. Oh. Okay. You have spillover of that low pressure to high pressure. Um, on your propeller. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. this is the same thing as extending it out. So it puts that fence. So you, you, have, you haven't had Phil's aerodynamics yet. Okay, so on a wing, you have the, the high pressure and you have the low pressure. The low pressure spills over. We had turbines, so. Okay, but the low pressure spills over and it makes that part of the wing sort of ineffective. Mm -hmm. Also, and so by putting a fence, that's the airliners, you see them now, they have the winglets. Okay, that prevents the low pressure from coming around. So it's in effect, it lengthens the wing. But um, one of the problems with propellers is you have ground clearance issues. You can't keep lowering it or making the prop longer. So by doing that, I don't know, I'm just gonna guess that's probably the equivalent of adding like a foot or eight inches to each, each blade. Wow. So why don't they all do that? It's expensive, money. 
You'd have to have an SDC for that prop. As no. you shorten the blade as well, doesn't it increase the speed of the blade? You would have, it doesn't automatically. Not automatically, but. But you would have to to get the same effectiveness out of it. Mm -hmm. Same as if you shortened a wing, you'd have to go faster. Uh, leading edge. And of course the trailing edge, talk about that. Let's, let's go back over here. Had the blade tip. You can go home and tell everybody it's uh, white so that the black doesn't slide off. Um, the leading edge. Um, so, um, now I put wood prop. Composite props have really taken off. I mean, just even since I started teaching, it was like composite prop. I mean, that's pretty rare to where now it's almost becoming more of a norm than an aluminum prop. When I was in an IA seminar, was it two years ago maybe? Um, some people from the area, Sullivan Propeller, real nice folks, were talking about the fact that you can't get a fixed pitch propeller. They're like, you just, we're six months to a year out. And they explained that Alcoa, and who else makes aluminum? I think it was mostly Alcoa had pretty much shut off their supply line to Sensnich propellers, the maker of most of the fixed pitch. And they just don't want it. They want the liability. They didn't want to do it. So they were like, we can't even get the aluminum to make these things. So, so we're going to go to composite. Woo, composite. I mean, we've come a long way. We went wood props. Then we went to metal. Now we're all the way to this fancy composite, which is a wood prop with fiberglass over the top. <laughs> so this is wood prop. And then it has a, a metal leading edge, usually uh, I think stainless steel or nickel. Uh, same reason, prop damage. Now you kind of think, well, you know, how likely is it to damage a prop? Well, Michael can attest that <laughs> looking at my prop, flying in and out of Lodi, man, I'm just gonna eat this, this it just eats my prop up. You know, we were doing something, you, you know, hey, you got a little prop ding over here. And I had to dress the prop and I, you know, we got back. I did it again that night because there's another one in it. Yeah, you just can't. It's horrible. So uh, wood prop uh, has metal tipping. To protect from rock chips. Carbon yes, fiber. carbon yeah. fiber, absolutely. Is it the one on Scrappy carbon fiber? Yeah. Is that even a, uh, that's not even an airplane propeller, isn't it? Isn't it I, an airboat? I think it's for airboats. I don't know. It's, that's a, it's a big blade. It's grabbing a lot of air. I ever tell you about my airboat experience? No. Trailing edge is obviously the opposite. I don't want to keep telling you a story. I got a lot to do, but it's sort of relevant. My wife and I went to Florida. <laughs> what? Because I'm telling the story. Off really well. Yeah, we went to Florida. It was this conference to homeschool uh, special needs kids, and we ended up blowing it off. And uh, she wanted to, and so we we put. Oh, we were there three days. We put over a thousand miles in this rental car. So we drove, we were in Orlando, drove all the way down the Everglades, and we get there kind of late, and she's like, I want to go see the Everglades. So she goes, you know, running into this place, you know, as they're getting ready to close. Hey, we want to see, you know, we go on an airboat tour ride. Okay, we've got one leaving in about 10 minutes, you know, we got enough room for two people, and, you know, and, it, and you know, you're going to go out, and you're going to, you know, do a little bit of this and that. Unless you want to pay for the special one, where it's like uh, just you two in a special boat. Yeah, we want that one. Like, hey, you didn't ask how much it was. She said, shut up, man. We're only here for a while. We'll take that one. And so, yeah, we get, I mean, we saw the one they got, just, you know, 30 people on this boat. It's kind of, you know, uh, and we get, so they pull us out to ours. And it's got one of the Cadillac V motors, the 500 Ooh. horsepower supercharged oh, yeah. with counter rotating carbon fiber props. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, is that thing fast. <laughs> and so my wife, this is the point of the story. She goes, so like, cause you're running over stuff. You're just going fast, man. It's like, you don't even see water, you know, but you got the toolies, but there's water down there. And she goes, so do you like need water to, you know, are you watching for it? And he's like, ma'am, I could do 70 miles an hour down the freeway with this engine. <laughs> because there'll be a lot of sparks and aluminum flying out, but I don't need water. <laughs> uh, trailing edge. And we have, okay, this is burned. Backup blade. 
I'm oh. just imagining a airboat going 70 miles down the freeway. Yep. <laughs> okay, back of blade. That is the cambered side. That doesn't help, does it? No. Cambered side. But that's what the book says. Uh, so I'll put this. Um, part you see when standing in front of the airplane. Standing in front of the aircraft, airplane. Okay, asterisk. Obviously, I'm talking about what we call a tractor-style airplane, a Cessna 150, 170, 182, Piper Cherokee. I'm not talking about a CB where the engine is backwards and it's a pusher or the one hanging from our ceiling, uh, the very easy, the long easy, or the rear engine in the Skymaster. Okay, that, that doesn't count. I have no idea I was here when I got up in the ceiling when I got here. The, uh, the, guy, the guy, the inventor, Bert, Bert and Dick Rutan, I forget which, which is which, but they're brothers, like the Wright brothers. Uh, one of them had said about that design, I would never, ever get in one that I didn't build myself. I don't know. I haven't really heard of too many crashing other than John Denver, but that was a fuel problem. They are stinking fast. Really? Oh my God! Yeah, they have like an O two hundred in it, and they're doing like a hundred and eighty miles an hour, or some crazy thing, or two hundred miles an hour. You do. You strap it on. Uh, Jay, face of blade. Face of blade. Face of blade. The part that faces the pilot. Yeah, it's got just a teeny tiny little baggage compartment. Um, that is the flat side. So on a pusher, it would just be flipped. Basically. You can't just take it off and rotate it over. It'll turn the wrong way. You actually have to have a pusher style prop. It becomes obvious if you look at the propeller, go out and look at the Sky Masters, because that's the best one to do. Look at our Sky Master. Go up, look at the front, and you go, okay, yeah, this is what I imagined to be. And then you walk around to the back and you look at it, and it's kind of like, yeah, it's all backwards. You're like looking at the engine, and it's all flat here, and it's rounded over here. Hey! So, uh, blade cord. Blade cord. What is the cord line of a wing? From the trailing end. Uh, leading edge to trailing edge. Yeah. Often it started with the imaginary line that connects the leading edge from the trailing edge. It doesn't have to be imaginary. It is. So, the, oops, the line. The line. It's an outline. Between leading edge and trailing edge. And L, blade station. A distance in inches. Now I have to wonder about that because now that we're getting props, composites, I think they're not necessarily made in the US. That would be in centimeters but American props, distance in inches from, this is a big important word, center of hub to the station, a distance in inches from center of hub. That's just it, the blade station. So, so if I said- It's like station numbers on an aircraft. Exactly, except, if I said, well, this has blade station 0 through 31, how big is the prop? 31 inches, right? Center hub to 31. So the prop is now? 62 inches. 62 inches. Okay. That's where you'll make your mistakes. All right, it is break time. Yeah, you go break. <laughs>